Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. Today I'll be drawing a cat in coloured pencil on Claire Fontaine pastel mat. I've been asked a few questions about pastel mat so I figured I'd make a video explaining why I like to use it as much as I do, as well as its properties and some positives and negatives about the product. Pastel mat is a unique surface created in France by the company Claire Fontaine. It consists of a thick cardstock that surface has been treated with a special coating of cellulose fibres, so on one side it has a velvety finish and the other side is just a glossy cardstock. As far as I'm aware, pastel mat is one of a kind as it's been textured with tiny cellulose fibres. No other company offers an equivalent product, however it is often compared to sanded papers, which also have a similarly micro-abrasive texture. The difference though is that sanded papers are coated with a texture containing pumice grit or sand, whereas pastel mat is coated with these plant fibres. As such, sanded papers generally tend to be rougher and more abrasive than pastel mat, although a few brands such as UART and Fisher offer a variety of grades of coarseness, much like how you can buy different grits of sandpaper at a hardware store. Pastel mat just comes in one grade though. It's quite difficult to describe the texture, but it reminds me of denim to the touch, as it has a softness to it and a very fine texture. And this makes it considerably more abrasive than conventional drawing and watercolour papers. This means that with dry media, pigments are effortlessly deposited onto the paper, and the texture also helps to finely break up the pigments and grabs onto them. Pastel mat boasts that because of the way the surface clings onto pigments, it greatly reduces the need for a fixative spray. As to not fall or get rubbed off of the paper, Artwork created with soft or chalk pastels generally require to be sealed with a fixative as they don't have the waxy binders that coloured pencils do that make them adhere to the paper. But many pastel artists find that using fixative alters their colours or even removes their top layers of work, so the fact that pastel mat reduces or removes the requirement for a fixative is a huge benefit in this case. As for other media, Pastel mat holds up very well to all sorts of products. I've used the surface with charcoal, pastels and pastel pencils, coloured pencil, watercolour and watercolour pencils and inks. It can also be used with acrylics and I'm sure plenty of other things but I have yet to try these. If you'd like to see how different mediums interact with this surface, I'll leave a link to a playlist in the cards in the top right and in the description box down below for a few videos where I demo different products on pastel mat. But one thing I wouldn't recommend using on pastel mat are pens with soft nibs or brush-like nibs, as I have a feeling that the abrasive surface may wear down the nib and cause it to fray. I'm sure it would work, but it might slowly eat away at your pens. Pastel mat is a thick 360 GSM, and the surface doesn't appear to be very absorbent, so as a result, I've never experienced buckling with this paper, and warping is minimal and only seems to occur with very heavy application of water, and if water can seep into the sides of the paper. Because of pastel mat's rigidity, I really like it for wet media and think that the surface works beautifully well for water-soluble pencils. Even with heavy application of water and some scrubbing with my brush, the surface coating doesn't lift or bubble. On the other hand, I've heard that Sennelier's pastel card doesn't take moisture at all, and even just a small amount of liquid will lift the surface to reveal bald spots of uncoated card. However, there are lots of other sanded papers that do tolerate water and mixed media. Something else I really like about pastel mat is how it interacts with aliphatic solvents, so things like odourless mineral spirits or paint thinners, or my personal favourite, the Zest It pencil blend, which I use throughout the process of this piece. Again, it holds up wonderfully to these solvents, and when using coloured pencil, the pencil pigment is broken up by the abrasive surface and is very easily dissolved and dispersed with the use of these liquid solvents. 
This has the effect of turning the coloured pencil into essentially a thin oil paint and can achieve brilliantly smooth coverage and be easily spread around the surface of the paper. Coloured pencil behaves very differently under these circumstances compared to being used to dry on drawing or watercolour paper and to me it almost feels like an entirely different medium. Another reason why I love pastel matte is just how easy it is to layer and blend. Because the surface breaks up pencil pigment, it's easy to blend coloured pencil together without the use of liquid solvents and can also be helped along with dry blending tools. Moreover, when using pastels, you can quite comfortably use your fingers to blend, whereas true sander paper can be very abrasive and quickly wear down the skin on your fingers. Additionally, because the surface pulls pigment so readily, you can effectively layer light colours over the top of darker ones and the lighter colours will remain clear and crisp. This is something quite unique to abrasive papers and you'd struggle to get the same effects on watercolour or drawing paper. The paper also accepts a lot of layers, meaning that you have plenty of room to build up depth, adjust your colours and add in details. Although the paper is textured, it's still easy to achieve fine and crisp detail, especially when a few layers of pigment is laid down beforehand. And because the paper accepts so many layers, I have found myself using up more of my coloured pencil than I have done on other papers. However, I found that most of this extra use was because of repeated sharpening to regain a, a sharp point. But I soon realised that a needle-like point on my pencils wasn't necessary until the final detailing layers. The benefit of using sharp pencils is more control over the smooth application of pigment, which can be circumvented when using solvents to achieve these smooth areas of colour. Also, I began to be more conscious about rotating my pencil as I work, as to avoid wearing down just one side, and this also helps to shape the pencil point and keep it even on all sides. One of the drawbacks I've noticed with coloured pencils on pastel mat is that if a lot of layers have been applied, the peaks of the paper's tooth become saturated, whilst the valleys can still accept more pigment, so further application of colour only fills the deeper areas of the paper, whilst not sticking to the top of the paper grain. This also can result in just burnishing the paper's peaks, and everything combined can give a speckled or mottled appearance. So it can take a little time and practice to know how much pigment the paper can take to give smooth results, without adding so much as to create this mottled effect, but I also have found that using brush and pencil's touch-up texture works fantastically to help combat this, by sealing the layers below and creating a textured film which can be further layered upon. And I use this product a couple of times throughout the completion of this piece. As for availability and the range this paper comes in, the paper is available in 14 beautiful colours with a great range of jewel-like colours and some more muted and desaturated shades. All colours are apparently light fast and acid free. For this piece here, I'm using the colour light blue, which is more of a cool grey in my opinion, but still a beautiful colour to work with. It's worth mentioning that a lot of the colour names for the paper colours aren't necessarily what you'd envision when hearing or reading them, so make sure to base your purchases off of images of the paper rather than colour name alone. Just as an aside, I have a hunch that the paler colours are smoother than the darker colours, the darker colours have a speckled appearance to them and seem to have slightly more texture. But perhaps I'm crazy or just imagining things. Pastel matte paper is available in large loose sheets measuring 50 by 70 centimetres and also can be found in packs of 5 sheets measuring 24 by 32 centimetres. On top of this, the paper is available in a very wide selection of 12 sheet pads in 3 different sizes. 18 by 24 centimetres, 24 by 30 centimetres, and 30 by 40 centimetres. The pads have also been given dimensions in inches on the packaging, but these measurements aren't very accurate. All of these pads conveniently come interleaved with glassine or crystal paper, which helps keep the paper clean before use, 
but I also find it very useful for storing and packaging finished artwork. This is a waxy protective paper that prevents pigments from smudging or lifting off. There are six different pads available, four of which contain a selection of four different colours, and also pads that contain just white or just anthracite, which is a slightly speckled charcoal grey colour. As usual, I'll leave links to my blog post in the description box down below, which gives more information about the colours and sets. Moreover, there's also another option of pastel mat available, which is pastel mat board. This is just pastel mat that's been mounted onto a 3mm backing board, which gives the surface an extra thickness and rigidity. As for pastel mat's availability, this might be a difficult paper to find in a shop, unless your art shop is very large or very specialist, but it can be readily found online. And like most papers, ignoring any additional shipping charges, it's most cost effective to buy large pads or sheets and cut them down to the size that you want to use. And this is certainly what I'll be doing when I buy more pastel mat next time. I'll be buying the large individual sheets as this also gives me better control over which colours I'm buying, as some colours I naturally use more than others. When I first bought the paper, I bought all four colour selections in order to have all of the 14 colours, with duplicates of white and dark blue. And whilst I've burned through some of the colours, I've barely touched others. So that leads me on to the price and probably my least favourite thing about pastel mat. This is not a cheap paper and is priced similarly to high-end watercolour papers. As such, although I love working on this surface, I try and be selective about what I draw on it and mainly reserve it for commission pieces and pieces that I intend to sell as a way of recouping the costs. I also keep scraps and when I want to experiment on this surface, I make sure to cut the paper down to very small sizes. If you're looking for a cheap alternative to pastel mat to use with coloured pencils, Nothing I've tried or heard of is the same, but a paper that I can recommend is Canson Mittons, which is what I use for practice pieces, or pieces that I don't quite want to use pastel mat for. The reverse side of this toned paper has a fine texture to it, and whilst it isn't abrasive like pastel mat, it's similar in some respects. By using a sharp pencil and a light hand, Colours can be built up in a similar way on this paper as to pastel mat, and it accepts mineral spirits pretty well. So to summarise, is pastel mat worth it? I think it is worth it, but only if you're happy to splash out on your hobby, or if you're earning money from your artwork. But I am biased because I love this paper so much, and I know that other artists do too, and they create the type of beautiful work that I strive for. But all this being said, paper is a very personal choice as it affects so much of your process, so what I might love, somebody else might despise, so like anything, I suggest that you try it out for yourself. And that's just about everything that I can tell you about pastel mat. As I mentioned before, more information, scans and charts can be seen on my blog post about this topic, link to which is in the description box down below. I'd love to hear what your favourite paper is for coloured pencil, or any thoughts and questions you might have about pastel mat. I read and respond to every comment. And here's my finished piece. I had a lot of fun playing with the colours in the light on this one. I'd been itching to draw a fluffy kitty in full colour for a while, and I'm pretty satisfied with both the process and the result. As always, a list of all of my materials are in the description box down below too. Don't forget to leave a like if you found this video helpful, and subscribe if you'd like to stay up to date with my future arty videos. Hope you have a lovely week, and I'll see you in the next video.